Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. Today we'll be picking up from the first shortcut in the Cathedral of the Deep. And we previously cleared out the whole outside, including the cemetery in the valley full of those leech monsters. And after fighting all the way through that, we can actually go through the back door into the cathedral proper now. Using, uh, and we can, we can get back there really quickly now using this elevator shortcut we opened up. And it's not the first one that's gonna... Sorry, it's not the last one. Uh, whoops. Not the last one that's gonna lead back to that primary bonfire. Which is something that I love about this level. It's the first of several shortcuts that lead back there. That's why I appreciate the layout of the Cathedral of the Deep so much. Because while every Dark Souls 3 level is as elaborate as it's ever been, the level design is just going at 110% throughout the whole game. And it's all very sprawling and enormous and complex. It also blends in some of the level design philosophy from Dark Souls 2 without the pitfalls, I'll say. Uh, which is to pepper bonfires all along your path constantly. I was just talking about these slimes in the ceiling before, too. Um, they pepper these bonfires in your path constantly. And the reason that didn't work in Dark Souls 2 is because they use that as kind of a cop-out to... Mm -mm. How do I want to phrase this? Uh, to not be as clever with the level design as they could have been. Because instead of having to really plan out carefully where a shortcut is going to be or how you're going to make your way back to whatever area you started out in, they could just put a bonfire in your path and you could just teleport between them. It kind of... Um, it was it was a design philosophy that caused them to, to hamstring themselves creatively. And while you still get a similar kind of philosophy in placing bonfires all over the place here, they were a lot more careful and a lot more creative to avoid that kind of uh, pitfall in 3, which is why it's, it works so well. They really learn from their mistakes. In fact, you could see them learning from the, the mistakes and all the criticism they took in DS2 with all of the... Ah, with all the... the DS2 DLC levels, which were among the very best in that game. Um, Leam Lois, the uh, the Old Iron King DLC, and uh, Shulva. Really, really elaborate, even though they follow this same kind of design of peppering bonfires everywhere. So, my point about the Cathedral of the Deep is that they paired it back with the amount of bonfires in here. And really, for most of the level, there's just the one. And this is a gigantic level. So they constrain themselves to just the one, and it forces them to be more creative with having to implement a multitude of shortcuts back to it. To keep it from all being super overwhelming. Whereas they felt, if they felt a little bit lazy, they could have just put another uh, Monfire in halfway through and just had the one shortcut. And I appreciate that, because it takes more effort to figure out how to plan the level out so that you'll eventually wind your way back to a gate or an elevator or a ladder or something. That goes right back to the beginning. Like, we had the ladder shortcut earlier, the ladder that you have to kick down after you get the Pursuer's Great Shield. And then we have the elevator, and there's... You saw there's another locked door in the bonfire room, in the chapel. So there are a couple more shortcuts left to unlock very cool. Um, and it reminds me a lot of Central Yarnum, which I think, for my money, is probably the best that kind of level design has ever been. Because it's a long ass time before you, uh, before you get a new lantern in Central Yarnum or anywhere around there. You just get the one, and it's the one by uh, not Gilligan, Gil uh, Gilbert. And you just have that one from almost the entire time you're in Central Yarnum. But it has so many shortcuts leading around it. Um, in, the, in the house, between all of the gates, all that stuff. So many shortcuts that lead back to it that once you open them up, you can go anywhere in Central Yarnum in like half a minute. And yet, before you open them up, you're in Central Yarnum for a good couple hours. Between 
between uh, Cleric Beast section, uh, the central square, the sewers, the blah, 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 the lead up to Gascoigne. Uh, it's all just a big series of elevators and doors and gateways and stuff. And lead back to that one little central lantern by Gilbert. And the Cathedral of the Deep is where I feel that type of level design is strongest in Dark Souls 3. We've seen shortcuts. Oh, also, uh, look at the chain on that chest. Also, take a look at this. It's very, very slight, but you can see uh, that it is a mimic because it has to take a couple of subtle breaths. So we have an Undead Hunter Charm, which is, again, the new name for the Lloyd's Talisman. The same trick works here as it did in uh, the previous Souls games. You can use the Lloyd's Talisman to uh, put the Mimic to sleep and just get the item out of him. And you can actually keep using a Lloyd's Talisman on him and try to farm him for the Symbol of Avarice, the Mimic Helm. Oh, and wow, the, the effect lasted through the attacks. Well, that punt almost never works. The flying kick worked that one time, though. <laughs> uh, so we got a Deep Braille Divine Tome. Which is a new type of tome. A Braille Divine Tome of the Deep, belonging to the Deacons of the Cathedral. Give this to a storyteller to learn miracles of the Deep, intended to teach divine protection to the Deacons of the Deep, but later dark tales were added to its pages, such that it's now considered a thing profane. So this one little item is pretty representative of the fracturing and splintering and corruption of the church. This was once a legitimate seeming um, religious organization until it was corrupted over time with Tales of the Deep. And I think that splintering is probably one of the most interesting aspects of uh, the deep and the religion here. And this guy. Oh, we dropped two things? Gauntlets and the Great Shield? Yeah. A heavy iron shield used by the Knights of the Cathedral of the Deep. The blessings of the Cathedral have granted it high dark absorption. The face of the shield is decorated with the emblem of an old king of Lothric, a bold image of a great bird gazing skywards. An old king of Lothric, a bold image of a great bird gazing skywards. <laughs> I've never read that description before or had any time to really puzzle that one out. What does that mean? Massive iron gauntlets worn by knights, knights serving the cathedral of the deep. Repulsive creatures of the deep are sure to attract the foolish, but the cathedral knights are prepared to meet such intruders head-on with their more than ample might. Hmm. I have to give that line about the bird some thought. What the hell is that all about? Uh, so we could come out here first. More, there's a dead end right here, and you can see on the other side of the room there is an item. And... Oh, invaded by Kirk. Fuck, I was hoping this event would trigger before I got in that room. It's okay, I'll be back for that item. Uh, I... For pretty obvious reasons, like you can see there's kind of an ambush waiting in that room. It's a little suspicious. I didn't want to fight Kirk in there, so we're coming back out here. Deal with him. Uh, Kirk, by the way, holy shit. What a... a bit of fan service he is. Uh, Kirk was the knight who invaded you constantly, I think, in the Demon Ruins uh, in Dark Souls 1, and you could eventually get his Armor of Thorns. Kirk was, if I remember correctly, a Dark Wraith. Uh, in this game, he is a member of a covenant called Rosaria's Fingers, which again is another big PvP covenant. And he drops his barbed straight sword and a spiked shield. And you can see I was taking a little bit of damage even when he rolled into me. That is his armor at work. The Armor of Thorns. Sword of Longfinger Kirk, the infamous Knight of Thorns. This sword's blade is lined with countless deadly thorns. The thorns of this ominous weapon induce heavy bleeding. And let's check his shield out for good measure. 
Shield of Longfinger Kirk, Notorious Knight of Thorns, Surface Bristles with Thorns, its vicious design makes it... Okay. Pretty much the same thing. Good at causing bleed. Let's go back in that room and see what that soul was all about. Or rather, that item. Oh, man! Oh! When you go to the other side of the room, that thing is supposed to drop down. I didn't think it would actually trigger just by me stepping foot at the beginning of the room. I was hoping to actually see this horrifying ambush um, the way it was intended. Sorry about that. This motherfucking beast spider drops an item called Aldrich's Sapphire, though. Uh, he also just drops out of the abyss in the ceiling. Like, you actually can't see him up there at first. A uh, malformed ring left by Aldrich, Saint of the Deep. Recovers FP from critical attacks. Aldrich, infamous for his appetite for flesh, apparently had the desire to share with others his joy of imbibing the final shudders of life while luxuriating in his victim's screams. That's one of the first really serious pieces of information that we've gotten about Aldrich, other than the intro spiel and uh, someone mentioning in passing, maybe Henri? Uh, that he was made of Lord of Cinder, and that he didn't choose to become one himself. Luxuriating in his victim's screams while he devours them. I do believe that he was referred to up till now as Aldrich the Devourer. It's Aldrich the Nikali. Okay, we want you first. All of these goddamn thrall ambushes. The ones on the outside are pretty good. They get a little bit tiresome inside. I'm gonna go back to Kirk for a second, though. Because of his title. His title is a recurring thing that we've seen. Uh, Long Finger Kirk. Ring Finger Leonard. Yellow Finger Hazel. Uh, these are all members of the Rosaria's Fingers Covenant, and they all have that naming convention that denotes as such. Uh, we're gonna want the dagger, because we're in this muck first. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, you take a long-ass time to swing that flamberge down. That bugs me about them. Because there is no roll timing that is ever going to be late enough. Uh, also, we should deal with the Cathedral Knight here. But I'm worried about the Thralls coming in and ambushing me, so I'm trying to clear them out first. Yeah, like, there's a bunch up here. As long as you're, you're a little bit mm, prudent about the way you approach these hallways, uh, the ambushes from the Thralls won't be too big of a problem. When they get really nasty is when you're trying to fend them off and they're putting you in hit stun and opening you up for attacks from the big cathedral knight over here. That's when it gets really nasty. Also, we get some poison from the statue. Oh, and that gave the knight time to buff up while I was waiting for the poison mist to dissipate. Whoops. Uh, his buff is not nearly as intense. I think that might just be a poise buff. Uh, it's not nearly as bad as the buff the weapon buffs from the Cathedral Knights we saw in the Consumed King's Garden. Those guys... were serious. Uh, these Cathedral Knights, a little bit less so, because we're coming in here kind of overpowered. Whereas the other Cathedral Knights we fought in the Garden, were uh, we were markedly underpowered to be fighting. Yeah, I suppose the Poison Mist isn't really doing all that much harm to me. So these giants... These giants are markedly different from the ones in Dark Souls 2. And in fact, they bear a much more striking resemblance to the Dark Souls 1 giants. There being giants here at all, though, sets up a kind of intriguing connection. And it's confusing why they're here at first. It seems kind of random at first. But then you go deeper in to the other areas connected with the Cathedral of the Deep and with Aldrich and the Pontiff, 
and it makes a lot more sense why they're here. So we'll let that hang for a minute and just fight this. Uh, these giants are pathetically easy to fight. They are absolutely no threat at all. Standing between their legs, they can do one thing, and it's a very slow stomp that you can just roll away from, even with your fat roll through the muck. They're, other than that, it's just kind of stabbing away at their ankles like a mosquito. Uh, they have a sizable health pool, but it's... They have no chance to hit you, so it's really just a battle of attrition. Oops, want the dagger. There we go. So we get maiden set. Oh, when did you get down here, buddy? You had one chance. You had one chance and you couldn't even hit me. What a loser. Uh, the giant left behind a big, a uh, bunch of dung pies and some titanite. So uh, we just stole the giant's shit. Literally stole his shit. This, mm, this door, what a goddamn cop out this door is. It looks so big and important, like it's going to lead you back to something of interest. White robe worn by traveling maidens, part of the formal attire regardless of rank. It's soft, well-made, but ill-suited for use in battle. Yeah. Um, this door is a cop out because it looks like it leads to something important. And look, oh, it even leads down to another gigantic cathedral door. Oh no, I think I spoke too soon. Nope, I'm an idiot. I know what, what this one is. Wait, am I about to second guess myself? Yes, definitely second guessing myself. That's not the door I was thinking of. Uh, for a second I was worried that that was actually the one that leads out to the front of the cathedral. Nope, just leads out to a single item. A silver biden decorated by a holy symbol formerly wielded by Saint Klimt. He discarded his weapon that draws upon one's faith on the day that he put down his... Uh, that he put his own faith behind him. So Saint Klimt, um, he was regarded as a saint in this religion, which is pretty significant when you consider that their other saint is Aldrich the Devourer. But he put his faith behind him, and that Biden of his was tantamount to something, some kind of um, heresy or sin and he renounced his faith uh, Klimt has another title that we'll be running up against and it was uh, Archdeacon he was previously Saint and Archdeacon Klimt and that one little item as much as I complain about the two giant important double doors being a cop-out because they only lead to that one item. Oh, and the stomp doesn't even do much damage. Uh, that one item does give you a pretty good hint at, uh, again, the fracturing of the Cathedral of the Deep and the hierarchy of the religion. I think the deep, frail, divine tome gives you a, a glimpse into that as well. There was some kind of power struggle. There was some kind of moral struggle, actually. Oh, you usually die, this, this gross, grimy-looking man slug. There was some kind of struggle. A very basic moral, spiritual struggle that caused Klimp to renounce his faith. The deacons were introducing these dark, dark passages into the, the divine tomes full of miracles and tales of miracles corrupting and influencing the religion. Hail Tongue. Uh, we're getting a whole lot of Drang items, which we'll take a look at once we get the last thing. These are hammers. Yep. Uh, so, you're keeping track. We got Drang... Uh, leggings, we got Drang gloves, and we got a Drang chest piece and hammers, but no helmet. This, uh, this looks like it creates a bridge, right? It's 
very impressive structure. Uh, this is not a bridge. This is, as, as best I can tell, it's a way to divide the room and stop the giants from coming after you if you don't want to fight them. But as we've seen, they're pretty easy to fight, so no need for that. Paired hammers of the Drying Knights, descendants from the land known for the legend of linking the fire, of the linking of the fire. When the Drying Knights disbanded, they scattered across the land as sellswords. They quickly became known as shieldless aggressive, uh, for their shieldless aggressive tactics that struck fear in the hearts of men. And we also picked this up. A great sword bestowed only upon elite knights. Uh oh. Is a relic of the ruined land of Astora, designed for focus on thrust attacks. A uh, great sword of a debauched executioner used for beheadings. The sword retains a keen memory of its executioner's duty and absorbs FP from each fallen foe. We picked that up in the cemetery earlier on. Uh, I'm gonna see the move cell on this, because it's kind of blunt looking. Hmm. It's just a regular greatsword moveset, unfortunately. Not really unfortunately, the greatsword standard moveset is pretty awesome, but I was hoping it would be something unique. Oh, that was what was hitting me. There's a bunch of little slimes. Yeah, and the fire really does it. Those things are super weak to fire. Uh, but yeah, the Drang armor set. Uh, we wanted to check that out as well as the maces. Armor of the Drang Knights proclaimed descendants from the land known for the legend of the linking of the fire. Fine protection that is both light and strong, having been reinforced with rare gay steel. Gay steel. Uh, the Drang Knights were once feared sellswords until treason meant descending into the abyss and they were separated forever. Drang armor. Uh... It is the exact same... Well, I don't know. My memory isn't uh, pristine enough of that armor set to say that it's the exact same thing. But it bears a, a very strong resemblance to the uh, Llewellyn set from Dark Souls 2 that Chancellor Welliger uh, gives you. And it talks about... The land known for the legend of the linking of the fire. So it's very obviously talking about Drang Laic. Drang Drang Laic. And that to me is saying that Drang Laic is Lordron, which was a really popular and pretty well supported theory from the Dark Souls 2 days. You can link the fire from the Throne of Want in Drang Laic. But, I don't know that anyone ever actually did. The player character might have? I don't know if that's even canonical, though. There's, there's no telling if the Linking the Fire ending from Dark Souls 2 is the canonical ending or not. And even if someone did Link the Fire in Drang Lake, why would Drang Lake be the land known for the legend of the linking of the fire, unless that legend dates back to when Drang Lake was known as Lordron. That's my feeling on it. Like, Lordron being where the kiln of the first flame was initially located, and where uh, Gwyn, who I, I'm pretty sure is the first person said to have linked the fire, linked the fire from wouldn't Lordron be the land known for the legend of the linking of the fire so that's why I'm kind of feeling like that's even more evidence for the theory of uh, Drang Laic still being Lordron. I'm sure people even to this day will fight that theory I'm interested to see the counterpoints um, yeah that's that's my thoughts on it interesting that we find the this relic from Drang Laic here though This, good, this is the door that I was thinking of earlier. The giant set of double doors leading out to the front side of the cathedral. Now I'm gonna have to go back to the bonfire here. And, uh, uh I have to reset the world state because something was not where I expected it to be.
After that embarrassing death, we are back. I could have probably made that work if I had just kept rolling instead. Ah, Sigmire is back, right? Oh, fuck these binoculars. Ugh. Well, you look reasonably sane. I am a knight of Katarina. I've managed to track down this cathedral's store of treasure. It's right over there, across that narrow part. Treasure? Hmm. Always so close, yet so far. I'm in quite a pickle, <laughs> indeed. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you just hold your horses a moment. I know, I know. Treasure is so sorely tempting. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, did you just... I... Sounds like Sigmire has a bit of a head cold. Plus, might be hollowing out and losing his memory a little bit. He's reintroducing himself and talking kind of funny. <laughs> Shame on you, you greedy guts. Thought you could outwit an onion. Well, say hello to the nice giant. He adores visitors. <laughs> All oh, trustworthy patches. Where's the old giant? What? Where's the bloody giant? Just what have you done? How dare you? Have you no shame? Damn! 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 And damn! 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 That's a great detail. That if you've already killed the giants at the ground level, patches has extra dialogue. That's one of the best Patches ambushes, disguised as another character. Really obviously not that character, but just the disguise adds the extra layer of fucking scummy duplicity. I love you, Patches. You're such a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so now we are going to wait. Is this door or the other one? There are actually two. Back to back. Oh, this, okay, this is the one that leads to the elevator. So I want to go into the other door. We right away, uh, could have gone here and opened this shortcut up. But I wanted to save it for when, uh, Patches put me back on the ground level anyway. So, we have our, our second shortcut leading back to this bonfire now. And we have a really, really quick way to get back to, uh, Patches as well. But this elevator also happens to take you to uh, a place from which you can go to a, a completely different area. Oh, there's you waiting right for me at the elevator. The elevator goes back down automatically. Ah, that's kind of nice. Rewinds itself by itself. Uh, so this is where that, that ambush was, where you go off to the buttress. The uh, fire crossbow ambush. And if you drop down, you can, you know, retrace your steps back into the cathedral. But if you just follow the ledge around, there's a ladder you can go up. And there's, uh, one of these bishops over here. And he actually has a unique drop. The first time you kill him, you get this, the deep ring. Which is, uh, where are you? This one. A ring bestowed upon the deacons of the Cathedral of the Deep allows attunements of additional spells in the Cathedral slumber uh, things most terrible, and as such, the deacons require a grand narrative to ensure they do not falter in their duty, a philosophy to ward away the madness beckoned by the grotesqueries at hand. So they need 
to come up with this big elaborate story just to ward away what would inevitably drive them insane. They were conti to continue on with whatever is lurking down in the deep. If they were to fully embrace that without this grand narrative of their Oh, this time the th thrall actually disguises it in ambush instead of being the ambush. I like it. They play with that a little bit. Because most of the time it's the thrall blindsiding you. But this time you see the thrall very, very plainly and then you get blindsided by something else. I like it. The design of an ambush. Hello. Oh, you slipped through the ledge a little bit. That's shitty. And what the thralls do for a lot of this part is they force you to slow down. They force you to slow down and be careful because if you run forward too quickly, then you get swarmed by a lot of different enemies. Uh, that's another one. One of these rooftops has something. There we go. Uh, you can judge by the item glow, actually, being the size it is. Uh, fairly sizable item glow that it was not just going to be an ember or a titanite shard or a soul or something. I really wish something gigantic would have jumped off that roof. Something that could have actually knocked me around or knocked me off. Like a cathedral knight would have been a good thing to, to drop on you there. <laughs> or an evangelist or something like that. But the thrall in that position... Eat shit. Uh, whoa! What? He... What happened? <laughs> that wasn't the same one, was it? Oh shit! <laughs> Uh, here we go. So you'll recognize where we are immediately if you look down. We are on the ceiling. We are on the, the, the top rafters of that main room from earlier, the one with the, uh, the muck and the giants. This one concerns me. Because I would rather not take a swing and have my character step forward off of these to an instant death. Right, I was saying before, uh, the item glows. They actually changed how the item glows work now to be uh, visual indicators for the importance of the item. Uh, if you see an item that has a really big, uh, bright glow, it's usually going to be something more significant than just a soul or a shard or an ember or something. But if it has a relatively tiny glow, like that item up against the uh, corpse on the wall, that's probably going to be um, an ember or something. Oh my god, no! That AI is too smart! It knew I was by the ledge and kicked me off! Hello darkness, my old friend. Come to talk with you again Don't let you hail sacred Falls down and does not mend Just remember That death is not the end I can't fucking believe that shit The AI had to actually recognize that I was by the ledge and a good kick, a good boot, would do it. Because I wasn't holding my shield up, which is normally the thing that triggers the AIs to do that as a guard break. Holy shit. At least he was kind enough to drop his armor. Because it's some very dope looking armor. Get off that ledge. Get off this ledge. Got him. Mmm. So mad I can't get him off the ledge. Fuck that night. Oh, I can't believe that shit. Uh, yeah, that item was indeed just a blessed gem. Kind of a minor infusion item. 
So we're now gonna try to follow, uh, trace the path of the raptors branching off to the right, because there's a drop down we have to make. No chance in hell am I fighting another one of these cathedral knights up here. No thank you. That's the thing we have to drop onto the little platform. So we can just drop here. Oh no! Oh! Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> this. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, good job. You got it, buddy. You did it. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> this is the absolute worst I have ever been about falling deaths in a soul game. I can't believe it. I can't believe how often I'm dying to that shit. Oh, and it's not just today. It was all those jumps in um the Firelink Tower. Ooh, you're new. Uh, this is where Patches sprung that ambush on us earlier. So we're now right back where we were. We can lift the bridge on up and confront Patches. I fucking hate these binoculars in this game. Fuck them. Ah. Oh. Yes, hello. Oh, I don't believe we've met. I'm Patches. Unbreakable Patches. You seem to be unkindled. Do you have business with me? Ah, oh, oh, yes, of course. It's coming back to me now. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my hand, as you know. But, but the deed, well, that was the armor's doing. Regrettable, truly. But behold, I'm stripped clean of that unruly attire. And look at you. Not a scratch. All's well that ends well, right? Yes, we'll be fine. I can tell. It's that rotten curse. It is. The untidy mess. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yes. Now, it wasn't me. But, but, but you still deserve an apology. Just a little trinket. Go ahead. It's yours now. It's all he gives you. <laughs> you should know, I'm a kind of uh, traveling merchant. If you're as unkindled as you look, you'll find plenty of good stuff. We'll get a couple of these because they might come in handy. Uh, he's also now selling Sigmeyer's uh, Onion Knight attire. We'll buy all this shit from him. Love how he blames the armor like it's possessed and it compelled him to trick you. Such a rat bastard. Distinctively shaped leggings worn by the Knights of Katarina, often ridiculed for the onion-like shape, infuriating the country's proud knights, but the masterfully forged curved designs makes them very effective for deflecting blows. Thanks, good cop. Oh, yeah, you can't resist it, can you? <laughs> I was hoping we'd get a little bit more dialogue from him. Oh, you could try looking a little harder. Fuck off, Patches, I should kill you. Uh, but I won't. So we have our shortcut back to the uh, the other side of the bridge where Patches initially ambushed us, but this, for now, is brand new. Oh god, they are sickening looking. The way that their bulbous, disgusting flesh just wriggles. Makes your skin crawl a little bit, huh? And this is a big ass ambush of them. An ambush of slug people. Uh, I guess I should go into the binoculars again. Someone a while back, when I was complaining about the binoculars initially. Wow, this works really well against them. Someone told me a slightly better way to use them is to put them on your quick bar and then just hit them while you're talking to an NPC. But even with the new change to the quick cycle to the Estus, I just like my belt tidy. And it's not, it's still not perfect. 
Like, what a fucking ridiculous head-scratching step backwards from every other game, including most recently Bloodborne. It boggles the mind why the binoculars are so bad now. I hate using them now. It's just the worst. They probably did it to solve the binoculars being used as a reticle for casting and shooting the bow, which was not a problem in need of a solution that drastic. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the invasion version of the white sign soapstone so that you can uh, lay your red soapstone sign down to be summoned to other people's world for duels. Yeah, what a, what a goddamn problem not in need of a solution. And the description for the binoculars even make reference to, like, people finding creative uses for the binoculars. It's a really bad change. Uh, armor of Kirk, the notorious Knight of Thorns, a dense patch of thorns grow from its surface, a fitting item for the murderous Kirk, for even the simple act of rolling can damage enemies wearing this attire. I think that's worded a little bit funny. Uh, did we... What else? I want to equip all this stuff. I always liked using them, even when I'm not LPing to look closer at details. There's no sense in the game coming to a new generation of consoles, much higher resolution, more detailed art, and then fucking up the item that helps you glance closer at the details. So this is Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth. We can ask to join her covenant, that's fine. And she gets, uh, she gives us the covenant item, Rosaria's Fingers. And now we can offer pale tongues to her, but she also allows us to alter our appearance and reallocate our attributes. So, respecking, And you can do that up to five times. Oh, and they take so long to pull out! What is all this writhing at her side, though? That she's kind of nursing and comforting. And she has nothing to say to us. And there's a reason for that. Because her tongue was cut out. Sacred seal of Archdeacon Klimt, who served Rosaria, mother of rebirth. Equipped to pledge oneself to the covenant, Rosaria's fingers collect tongues in her name. Some do it to be reborn, others do it to help comfort their voiceless goddess. Yeah, that the voiceless goddess was referenced in the pale tongue from earlier. And I believe it might have also been referenced by uh, Ringfinger Leonard, who was also a member of the the uh, Fingers of Rosaria Covenant. So now... Yeah, binoculars made of brass used to appear a distant scenery. Their utility is singular, but applications many. The value of these specs depend greatly on the creativity of their user. Yeah, they even make reference to people finding creative ways to use it, so I, I really feel like that's why they made the binoculars so shit in this one. It, which is a real shame. That Thorn's armor actually does a non-trivial amount of damage. Um, there is the one of my favorite ever PvP videos, and it's just a gank squad full of people in uh, the Thorn's set. Rolling into into invaders Like four at once And killing the invaders do another but rolling into them So one more time real quickly We are gonna come down here make sure we didn't miss anything and I think we're uh, pretty okay on that front Uh, if we could have gotten the, the slugmen to drop their stabs, especially the, the uh, casters in particular, they would tell us a couple of interesting things. One, their stabs scale with luck. But also, those slug people weren't always like that. They were reborn into that form. So they had Rosaria work her miracles on them to reshape them into their slug forms. Or maybe it wasn't voluntary. 
Maybe they did something to provoke her into doing that to them. Make a lot more sense than asking to inhabit that kind of form forever. But we'll have to wait a while to see how that resolves. Unfortunately, we can't actually do very much with the Rosaria's Fingers Covenant. Like, we can't equip the Covenant item to join it. Ooh, he was starting to buff the weapon. Uh, we can't actually do very much with it yet, because if we do, it will end Cirrus of the Sunless Realms Ziz questline prematurely. So we'll have to come back for that. We'll have to uh, handle some of that stuff later. Now all that's left to do in the Cathedral of the Deep is uh, head into that boss fog. And let's for good measure make sure we have the Faring Greatsword on because the thing kicks so much ass. And this is a big group fight. So it'll work out exceptionally well against huge numbers of enemies with that L1 attack. Also, I just want to show this off. They are very, very susceptible to the Alluring Skull. They get distracted so easily. Even the Dancer's Blades, the Blade Twirl, just chews through them. Uh, this is a big group fight. It's also a huge gimmick fight. Uh, there's one of these deacons, you can see back there, who is glowing red. That's the one you want to target. Once the uh, red glowing deacon is, deacon is killed, it does a little bit of damage on the health bar, and that red uh, spirit jumps to a different deacon, who then you have to then retarget. And as you can see, this is, you know, the pinwheel or prowling magus and congregation of this game, just a real triviality. Which becomes even more trivial if you just toss the alluring skull a couple times. <laughs> ah. Good. One overhead. Oh, uh, this is also why I brought the Knight of Thorns armor in here. Just because, why not? You're gonna be rolling into them a bunch, so... Just little sprinkling of extra damage. Oh, it just carves through them! everything around you and um, we've moved on to the next stage of the fight where there is uh, just one deacon now this is the archdeacon one of the archdeacons so he'll remain with the red soul uh, throughout the rest of the fight a couple of new enemy types spawn in it's mostly just them casting fireballs at you if you leave the archdeacon alone for too long, he uh, conjures this giant mist that goes throughout almost the entire room and curses you, which is one of the only ways in which deacons are actually threatening. Uh, this is the spell that he's casting. If you let him complete that, you can become cursed, and uh, that's an instant death. But it takes a long time to complete the cast. Oh, yeah! Glad I was able to finish that one off in style. You get not only the souls of the Deacons of the Deep, but you get a small doll. And check this thing out. That would be Aldrich's coffin. Soul of the Deacons of the Deep. After Aldrich left for the Boreal Valley, Archdeacon Royce remained in the cathedral with the high priests to keep eternal watch over their master's coffin. That enormous slab of stone behind us is the coffin of Aldrich. And a small doll. Small silverwork doll depicting a young squire. In the legendary old city of Irithyll, situated in the Boreal Valley, the Pontiff Sullivan gave this doll to valued subjects so that they might use it to cross the barrier when they return home. Listen carefully and you can hear it say, Wherever you go, the moon still sets in Irithyll. Wherever you may be, Irithyll is your home. A doll that lets you cross a barrier into uh, a winter wonderland. If 
But no, I just want to appreciate this monolith <laughs> real quick. Uh, and if we hit the bonfire and rest at it to reset the world state, what appears when you uh, come back in... Oh, no, I didn't have to actually uh, complete to, um, hit a loading screen to make that appear. Oops. At least the loading screen is like three seconds on the PC version. Uh, he leaves all of his garb behind. That was Archdeacon Royce that we fought, judging by the description for the soul. White crown worn by Archdeacon of the Cathedral of the Deep presented solely to the delegates of the gods. Of the three Archdeacons of the Deep, one cast off his white crown and left the cathedral to stand by Aldrich. Uh, that would be the one belonging to Archdeacon McDonnell. And it's a Pope hat! We can be the Pope. I am the Pope now. I've wanted this forever. So, there is Archdeacon Klimt, who renounced his faith. There's Archdeacon McDonald, who left to be with Aldrich, and Royce, who we just killed. And that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.